have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. So let freedom ring. When we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of our children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. The Urban League of Metropolitan St. Louis and St. Louis University hosted the annual Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Tribute Breakfast on SLU's campus. Speakers included President and CEO of Urban League of Metropolitan St. Louis, Michael McMillan, and keynote address from journalist Roland Martin. There was a special awards presentation for leadership in politics, education, organization, and humanitarian of the year. Here's Michael McMillan on the importance of today's event. Well, what we did today is we partnered with St. Louis University on paying a tribute to Dr. King, his life, his legacy, his dream, and everything that he stood for, but really trying to apply that to today's world and how we can live out that dream, how we can make sure that we fulfill the things that he wanted to see happen in his lifetime as a dream deferred. And today we honored five individuals in different categories who have lived that out, and we celebrated with 500 people from the community as a way to bring the community into St. Louis University and take St. Louis University and expose it to the broader community, most specifically members of the African American community that are concerned about justice, equality, and moving St. Louis forward. And what do we want to do in the future uh, in terms of other community events like this? Well, we want to take a real look at where are we where should we be and what are the steps that we need to do to get there? So whether it's voting, whether it's being involved in the census, mentoring a young people, getting involved in an organization, contributing to causes that you support to make social justice a priority in the community. All of those different things are things that we are trying to push individuals to do to say how they can personally own the dream of Dr. King and live out his mission. You know him as a host, commentator, and author. Seen him on CNN, TV One, and of course heard him on the Tom Journal Morning Show. His name is Roland Martin, and he's here in St. Louis as a tribute to, the, to Martin Luther King Jr. Welcome to St. Louis. All right, glad to be back. Uh, your keynote speech, you mentioned that people run away from drama when they need to talk about having, actually having serious conversations. What serious conversations can we have when people are afraid to talk to neighbors? and friends about those kinds of things that you mentioned in your speech. I think first and foremost we would talk about the issue of uh, race uh, in terms of like, like what is the reality of it. Uh, and so you look at what's happening, this whole battle right now with Kim Gardner, a lawsuit she filed against folks in this city. Um, how is it that she gets elected but then she's having a fight to do her job. You look at uh, when you get all of these white assistant DAs, when Wesley Bell gets uh, elected as DA, all of a sudden they rush to join, oh, we need a union, and they join the police union. You see all those different things. And so what is it about black folks getting into power that's causing whites to freak out? The reality is this here. Uh, we live in a country that is where you have, where you have white Americans who have been unwilling to share power. And the same thing, economic resources as well. And so you, one has to be honest about that. And then what the pro, part of the problem we have in this country is this here, whenever we have this discussion, we, we go racist, not racist. And so somebody says, well, I'm not a racist. Yeah, but it's a whole lot in between that that folks don't want to have to deal with. And so we, we, have, we have to understand that. Uh, when you hear economic anxiety, what the hell does that mean? Black people have had economic anxiety for a long time, so all of a sudden that's new to white folks. And so we have to be force folks to understand that you have to be able to have the dialogue. King wrote about this in the Chaos Hall community where he said white Americans do not have any understanding what black folks have gone through. Then he said that white people are wholly unprepared for 
per, uh, helping black people to, to achieve equality. That was in 67. It hasn't changed. Those are the conversations I'm talking about. Uh, a lot of people um, talked about, you, uh, well, you talked about this in your speech, and a lot of people have mentioned this before, that sort of watered-down version of Dr. King. And uh, you have a problem with people who celebrate his legacy but don't necessarily remember those, that, that I guess, right. activism in him. Right. No, the, no, the radicalness. Well, the radical. See, that's the problem. We don't want to, look, perfect example. We talk about the founding fathers in the American Revolution. We call them revolutionaries. Yet anytime the word revolutionary has been attached to black people, all of a sudden now people get scared. Black Panthers were revolutionaries. Um, oh my goodness, what, you know, in terms of, if you read, if you read uh, James Foreman's book, uh, that's what his book, the, the title. You read Howard Zinn's book on SNCC. Uh, they were talking about being modern day revolutionaries, the making of revolutionaries. That is the reality that, that we, are, we are dealing with. Why is it more important that we remember that part of him and not just the, uh, the, the holding hands? Because, and that's what made, because, because that's what he was about. That's, that's actually, no, that's exactly what he was. No, you can, you can be a revolutionary and still be nonviolent. Mm -hmm. The problem is America doesn't want to confront the radical revolutionary because that requires now work. Why, do, why does America love uh, the I have a dream portion? Because it's lofty, it's aspirational. The top two thirds of the speech, that's the hard work. See, we don't wanna deal with the work. We only wanna deal with the nice, can we just all get along? No, we don't wanna deal with economic inequality. We don't wanna deal with police brutality. We don't wanna deal with voter suppression. So what, what do people do? Can't we just all get along? No, we cannot get along till this is fixed. And that's the deal. You take a couple that's been having, that has a volatile marriage, okay? You can say, can we just all get along? That don't change the two not, be, not getting along. It doesn't change that they're all in water. It doesn't change problems that they have. So just saying, can we all get along, just tries to cover up everything. No, you gotta deal with what is the core root issue of a problem and just saying, can we all get along? That's the problem. And so we don't wanna deal with that, deal with that. We wanna say, no, King said we should all love one another. He was like, yeah, but still change some stuff. See, we don't want to deal with that. And, and that has been the problem of America since 1619, since the end of slavery, since Reconstruction, since the battle during Jim Crow, since the ending of Jim Crow, since the black, black freedom movement, civil rights movement, all of that. America does not want to have to reckon with how do we fix this. America wants to say, can, can we just, can you, can you like not bring that stuff up? Can we just like just, just, just have a nice time.